To most people I know, the words Afro and Palestinian would seem unrelated. This includes Palestinians themselves, since most Palestinians in the world live in diaspora, which simply means that they live away from home. With the recent events that happened in Palestine, I came across a post that mentioned Afro-Palestinians forwarded to me by the mysterious Middle East, which talked about their existence. I immediately remembered the stories my folks would tell me while growing up. I would ask my parents a gazillion questions about life back home and the people there. I remember on several occasions them mentioning that there was a community of Palestinians that were black. According to my parents, they were original Palestinians who looked exactly like Africans. I decided to dig deeper to find out who they really are since Africa is a completely different continent. So how did they arrive there, and what was their history? To my surprise, all the information I could find was based on stories older generations passed on verbally over the years, just like my parents passed on their experiences and stories they told me, and that there were no records of this particular race of people coming to the lands of Palestine. Not officially, that is. Now, before I continue, you have to understand that even though this is a thriving community in the heart of Palestine that is alive and kicking today, as a member of Diaspora who lives outside of Palestine, it is not exactly easy for me to simply hop on a plane and fly there and speak to these people directly about their community and culture because, well, you know the situation. Nor is it easy to readily identify Afro-Palestinians outside of Palestine because they are indistinguishable from other blacks and Afro-Arabs. So for now, the easiest thing for me to do is look into what others have written about them. The good news was that there were several Palestinian historians, including Arif al-Arif, who tried to put the pieces of the puzzle together based on actual historical events, in addition to the oral stories told by various Afro-Palestinian families. These family origins can be traced to locations as far as Nigeria, Chad, Mali, and Senegal, and their roots connected to Arab African tribes of Husa, Salamat, Burgu, Zagawa, Burno, Gambo, and Balala. I hope my pronunciation wasn't too off. I have this cool feeling now while writing this, where I'm imagining myself being Alex Haley, writing the book Roots, or the autobiography of Malcolm X. I think I'll have to put my ego on check first thing after uploading this video. Now back to the history part. We can summarize African immigration to Palestine into three major eras. The Umayyad Khalifat era, the Fatimid Khalifat era, and the last days of the Ottoman Empire during World War I. During the Umayyad Khilafah, for those of you who don't know, the Khilafah had control over lands from North Africa in the West to Central Asia in the East. This allowed a lot of trade and diplomatic relations to thrive. In addition, Muslim, Christian, and Jewish people from all around the region would visit the lands of Palestine for pilgrimage, where many of which decided to stay and live there due to the economical and political stability of the region at that time. I guess because it was a multinational area, it was no more for people in the cities of Palestine to see other people from all around the world and made them more tolerant to different races and faiths as it was normal to see this especially in a city like Jerusalem whose Arabic name is Al-Quds meaning the Holy Land. The stories my parents told me make more sense now when I look at the map. They said that there was a large number of Afro-Palestinians who lived in cities called Ariha otherwise known as Jericho in English and Al-Ghor in today's Jordan, places located between Jerusalem and the Dead Sea of Jordan. This means that African settlers must have chosen these places to live in after visiting Al-Quds. That's my guess. The Fatimid Khilafah era was different. This Khilafah controlled the lands of Egypt and North Africa, and they were very well known for slave trade. According to historians, the port of Gaza city was a hub for slave trade, 
Due to its location by the Mediterranean Sea and its close proximity to Cairo, the Khilafat's capital, it makes sense to say that it is here where the racist term used up to a couple of decades ago in Arabic, which is Abid, meaning slaves, came from. This was a term used to describe blacks. I remember hearing previous Palestinian generations called black neighborhoods Hart al-Abid. I will do a separate video in the near future about racism and prejudice in the Middle East, as I believe it functions in a completely different way from the West. There is a significant amount of Afro-Palestinian Bedouin tribes who live today in the desert south of Gaza. Their origins are believed to be the leftovers of slavery back in the Fatimid era. The most recent era that witnessed African visitors to Palestine was during the last days of the Ottoman Empire, during World War I, where Al-Arif spoke about in his book, The Detailed History of Jerusalem. He mentions that during this time, many Africans had visited Jerusalem for pilgrimage and were never able to go back home due to the new borders that Britain and France had established after winning the war against the Ottomans. Since they had nowhere else to go, they were forced to stay in Palestine and make it their new home. I think it's important to differentiate between the Afro-Palestinians and the Afro-Israelis, where the latter were over 14,000 African Jews from Ethiopia that were flown in in the early 1990s by the Israeli Air Force to save them from captivity in Sudan. These Ethiopian Jews are today considered Israeli citizens, and there is a big conspiracy about them being treated as second-class citizens in Israel. And that's a whole different and complicated story altogether. And today, Hayy al Afarqa is an enclave located at the northern gate of Jerusalem's holy place, Al Haram Sharif, in the Muslim quarter of the city. It holds a minority of 350 to 450 African Palestinian families. They are proud Palestinians that belong to our society and to our culture. Palestine, specifically Jerusalem, has other ethnic minorities that originate from Central Asia, from countries like India and Afghanistan, Western Asia, like the Arabian Peninsula, and North Africa, specifically Morocco. The oldest civilization that can be traced in Palestine was found near Tabariya Lake in the Jordan Rift Valley. Historians say that it's around 1.5 million years old. In my opinion, since Palestine has a very long history of different civilizations and dynasties that ruled the land due to its religious and geographical significance, this is why we are a mixed race. You'll find Palestinian features that range from blue-eyed blondes to curly-haired blacks who share a common culture, language, and tradition. Like I said earlier in this video, I'm very proud to have dug deeper into my roots and to have learned about my own history and family. I hope you learned something as well. Maybe my kids will appreciate this history lesson one day too. And to those of you who stuck around to the end of this video, you guys are awesome. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support and optimistic our Patreon will help me continue this work that I enjoy so much. Until next time.